dangerous fault lines. I just finished recording a video about the Cascadia fault. Super, super dangerous. But guys, there is something else. And I'm sorry, my viewers from New Zealand, uh, we have to talk about this. Have you heard of the Alpine fault? Most people haven't. And just recently, when we talked about the Cascadia subduction zone, one of the most dangerous geological ticking time bombs on the planet. We also looked at the Ring of Fire, the Pacific Ring of Fire. I've made several videos about it because there is increased activity right now when it comes to earthquakes and volcanoes. That's a fiery belt, how you can call it, of seismic and volcanic chaos that is circling the Pacific plate. But there's something even more unsettling, guys, and that's why we need to talk about this. On the southern edge of the Pacific Ring of Fire, quietly hiding in plain sight, is a fault so powerful and so overdue that it could rip an entire country in half. Well, it kind of is already with the two North and South Islands, but I mean, literally, this is kind of crazy if you look where that fault is, where it is situated inside the country, so to speak. So that is the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. And if you thought the Cascadia Fault was terrifying, which I do, wait until you hear what's happening beneath the South Island of New Zealand. Let's start with the basics about this fault because understanding what's at stake means we have to go back in time and look what this thing did. We really have to say this is a hidden monster beneath paradise. It is paradise. This is so beautiful, this area. Um, it's tough if you fly there because the plane's really shaking when it flies over the Pacific. Um, it, I, I've never been so seasick in my life, but New Zealand. It's often seen as a peaceful paradise, rugged mountains, deep fjords, endless green, beef, sheep, just beautiful. But it sits on a very violent boundary, unfortunately, the collision zone between the Pacific Plate and the Australian Plate. So again, it's you Australians, it's your fault. No, I'm just kidding, guys. So that boundary slices through the South Island and where these two plates grind past each other like the teeth of a giant gear. This is the Alpine Fault. So it's different than the Cascadia Fault. Cascadia is a subducting, subduction zone. The Alpine Fault is my, mostly a strike slip fault like the San Andreas Fault. So that means the plates move sideways rather than one diving beneath the other, like subducting. So I mentioned California San Andreas Fault, but think of the San Andreas Fault on steroids. That's the Alpine Fault. And here's the thing. The Alpine Fault doesn't just shift a little now and then. It tends to stay quiet for hundreds of years. And that's the problem that we have with the Cascadia Fault as well. And then it releases all its energy in one catastrophic jolt. It's locked and loaded and then poof. So how do they know that this earthquake is overdue? Well, they discovered an earthquake, the 1717 earthquake. So in the 1990s and the early 2000s, geologists began digging trenches along the Alpine Fault to study the soil layers because that tells you a story about the past and unfortunately what they then found really really shocked them at multiple sites they discovered sharp breaks in the sediment layers of twisted and offset soil like clear signs of massive ground movement and have you seen my video about the Myanmar earthquake, a 7.7? .7? A surveillance video came up and you could see the earth displace. I've never seen anything like this before and scientists say this has never been recorded on camera. It's groundbreaking. No, it's, 
And there's so much to see in the video. First, you think, oh, it's only the pavement that's cracking. And then behind the gate in the video, suddenly you see what the earth is doing. And then you don't even see that things are collapsing and falling apart. This video is, I'll put it in the end screen, guys. If you haven't seen it, it's a must see. You will not regret it. I promise you this. So they found, because if the ground breaks and then moves in different direction, it moves the soil. It's displaced and twisted. It's offset. Clear signs of massive ground movement by radiocarbon dating organic material that was trapped between those layers. It's like fragments of wood or peat or something. They could pin down the timing of past quakes. They use the same technique here at the Cascadia Fault. So that's how they discovered that the last major rupture of the Alpine Fault happened in the year 1717, before Europeans hadn't even had even settled in the region. And that quake, guys, it was a monster. We have to call it a monster. Estimated magnitude 8.1 or higher. It caused a lateral shift of 7 to 8 meters. A lateral shift. In some places, that's nearly 25 feet of sideways motion. Again, if you want to see how that looks first time on camera, video in the end screen. I'll show you the thumbnail here so that you know what you have to click on. So really, imagine your house is on top of this and, and then suddenly it's being shifted 25 feet in an instant. If you're lucky, the whole house is shifted. If you're not lucky, your living room shifts in one direction and your bedroom in the other direction. That's the level of force we're talking about. But here's where things get even more unnerving, guys. This wasn't a one-time freak event, like an, an oopsie of the earth. Nope. Scientists have since uncovered evidence of 22 major alpine fault earthquakes over the last 4,000 years. So on average, these mega quakes occur every 300 years. So some have even been as short as the intervals between two earthquakes, as short as 140 years, but then others 510 years. So the 300 years is just an average number. But here's the kicker, guys. As of today, it's been over 300 years since the last one. Yeah, maybe we're lucky and it takes another 510, but maybe not. So statistically the alpine fault is due overdue and that's why geologists are so concerned so what happens when the alpine fault ruptures here's the question how will it rupture if the alpine fault ruptures in a full length event and that's exactly unfortunately what scientists expect it could generate a magnitude 8 or 8.2 earthquake affecting the entire South Island. The quake would cause massive lateral displacement, tear apart roads, railways, pipelines. Again, in my video, you will see how railway lines all of a sudden go like this. It's crazy. So railways, pipelines, they cut off access to major communities for days, maybe weeks, maybe even longer. The southern mountain range on the South Islands, already steep and unstable, would experience massive landslides. We've just seen one in Blatten in Switzerland. This looked like a volcanic eruption has buried the whole village. If you want to see that, I'll put the first video in the end screen and then check the playlist because that has unfolded crazy. So these landslides would be damming rivers and burying homes. And this was the Swiss Alps in Blatten, by the way. Here, it's also called the Alps, the New Zealand, the Southern Alps. So also there, rivers be dammed, villages and, and homes destroyed by flood, by landslides. Coastal towns could see significant uplift or subsidence. Depends. And while this isn't a subduction zone, tsunamis can't be ruled out, especially if landslides hit 
lakes or fjords because then it, it's getting bitter like in a bathtub right it hits one side of the fjord goes back to the next side that's why this is so dangerous in Norway for example a Cairness mountain is about to break uh, I've made a video about that as well I'll put it in the end screen it's crazy could see like tsunami waves you can't imagine so there's an over 75 percent chance that New Zealand will see an earthquake above magnitude 8 in the next 50 years. You know, and don't listen to 50 years and think it's happening in 50 years. And then if you're a little older, you think I'm out of the woods. Within 50 years, could happen tomorrow in five years. That would affect you in 10 years, right? This is not a good, good prediction. 75%. I think the Cascadia subduction zone has like a 30% in the next 50 years or something. I'll blend it in. I have to look it up. Critical infrastructure in New Zealand would be down. Hospitals, power gone, water and communication severed. Even the west coast of the South Island where towns like Hokitika and Greymouth sit could be completely isolated. So how do we know that it will happen again? Well, this isn't guesswork, guys, really. It's scientists from GNS Science, New Zealand's leading geophysical institute have created detailed models based on trench data, GPS measurements and satellite observations. So they've measured the strain that's accumulating on the fault millimeters per year, slowly but steadily, and that is accumulating. So this isn't just potential energy, it is stored power waiting for release, locked and loaded. And they call it, there's even a term for it, it's called elastic rebound. Like over centuries, the crust bends like a loaded spring. And when it finally snaps, all that stored energy is released in seconds. Same with the San Andreas Fault, especially the southern part of the San Andreas Fault, is locked and loaded. So that's how the Alpine Fault will behave. And that's how it has always behaved. Are people prepared? Here's where it gets tragic, guys. Most New Zealanders are aware of earthquakes. They live with it. It's part of their daily life. But the Alpine Fault, it's a little bit out of sight, out of mind. The West Coast has many small towns and rural communities, people who've lived there for generations. Farmers, loggers, families, people who love their land. And even though scientists have issued detailed warnings, they have held community briefings, pushed for preparedness plans, many locals aren't leaving. Can you blame them? Well, Imagine you're a third or fourth generation farmer, your land, your home, your animals, it's all you've ever known. Probably they say, I'm taking my chances. The government has offered, by the way, resilience funding and promoted emergency planning, but relocation isn't easy, especially if you're on an island, right? You can't just, the land is limited. So many say they're willing to risk it. One farmer was quoted saying, we're used to the ground shaking here and so are our cows. We're not bothered. But this quake wouldn't be like anything they have experienced before. Scientists are now monitoring the countdown to the next big one. It is a countdown, 75% in the next 50 years. That's crazy. So they're now monitoring the Alpine found fault more closely than ever using GPS, satellite, interferometry and even boreholes drilled in the fault itself. They're trying to watch it breathe, watching the pressure build. So some worry that foreshocks like smaller quakes along the nearby faults could trigger the main event. And that worry is, is uh, justified because scientists have looked at the San Andreas fault. Fault goes like this, but then there's many faults going like this like at a vertical angle, smaller faults. And the findings are some scientists say yes, some no, but I think the consensus is more like the smaller faults could trigger the big one. Of course, many others think 
and they're afraid it could strike without a warning, just like it did in 1717. But everyone agrees on one thing, it will happen. The question is only when, 75% within the next 50 years. So we spent so much time watching the Ring of Fire, Indonesia, Japan, Chile, Cascadia Fault. But here's the sleeping monster in New Zealand, quiet for over 300 years and statistically primed to strike again in the near future. So the next time you hear about the big one, don't just think California or West Coast, Cascadia. Think New Zealand, think the Alpine Fault. There's several big ones. I mean, Japan is waiting for the big one. It's the ring of fire. But this one, wow. Because somewhere under these breathtaking mountains and peaceful valleys, guys, the plates are grinding. The energy is building. And the clock is ticking. Will it be in our lifetime? Nobody knows. But one thing is for sure. When it happens, the world will be watching this. So guys, I hope you liked what you saw. If you want to support the channel, check the links in the description. I have a buy me a coffee site. If you buy me coffee, you can leave me a message. I can answer with a video message. You can answer back and we can see each other. Thanks for the supers. Thanks for the memberships. If you want to join as a supporting member, links are in the description. Click the join button. And uh, yeah, if you liked it, leave it a like. Subscribe for more, guys. And really, if you haven't seen them, check out the videos in the end screen. So yeah, what can I say? To my viewers in New Zealand, in New Zealand prepare as good as you can, I guess, right? So yeah, guys, see you in the next one, probably here in the end screen. Bye-bye.